Let me show you how to increase the recycling of your body's most important antioxidant glutathione. This is super important for your health, your energy levels, and slowing down aging, because the body is constantly using up glutathione to fight free radicals, lower inflammation, and detox harmful substances. So it needs to be recycled over and over again to keep supporting your health. Let's go through how your recycling system actually works and the key nutrients you need to keep the system strong. To start off, you need to understand that anything that increases oxidative stress will burn through your glutathione reserves. This includes eliminating chemicals, heavy metals, and pollutants, because glutathione binds to all sorts of toxins in the liver, so they can be detoxified. Breaking down excess hormones like estrogen, because your liver also uses glutathione to help clear out hormones so they don't build up. Fighting off infections, as your immune system actually generates free radicals to kill them, and that process also uses up glutathione to protect your own tissues. Drinking alcohol, because breaking down alcohol produces a very active compound which requires glutathione to be neutralized. And things like chronic stress, poor sleep, and overtraining, since all of them ramp up oxidative stress in your body and burn through your antioxidant reserves. So you can see why people living a modern lifestyle with lots of stress, processed foods, pollution, and maybe too much drinking often have low glutathione levels. And here's the key. Your body actually prefers to not always have to make new glutathione from scratch, and instead it relies on recycling the used up glutathione back into its active form. That means if your recycling system is weak, you run out of glutathione faster. Let's quickly look at how this system works before I show you how to improve it. Inside your cells, glutathione exists mainly in its active form called GSH, which stands for reduced glutathione. When it neutralizes a free radical, it gets oxidized and turns into GSSG, which is the used up form. To keep protecting you, GSSG needs to be turned back into GSH, and this is where the enzyme glutathione reductase comes into play. It takes GSSG and converts it back into GSH, but to do that, it needs something called NADPH, which is like a little energy packet that drives the reaction. So your recycling system depends on two things. One, having enough glutathione reductase enzyme, and two, having enough NADPH to power that enzyme. We can improve both of these through specific nutrients and cofactors. Let's talk about the most important ones, starting with having enough glutathione reductase enzyme. So here the most important nutrient is vitamin B2, so riboflavin. This is one of the most critical vitamins when it comes to keeping your glutathione recycling system running. That's because B2 is needed to make FAD, which stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. Think of FAD like a little electric conductor that sits inside the enzyme. Like I just said, when your body needs to recycle used up glutathione into its active form, glutathione reductase does all the heavy lifting. But it can't do it alone. It relies completely on FAD to move electrons from NADPH over to GSSG, so the oxidized form of glutathione. This transfer is what actually converts it back to fresh, active glutathione. So without enough riboflavin in your diet, you can't make enough FAD. That means your glutathione reductase enzyme doesn't work properly and you start falling behind on recycling. Riboflavin also supports many other enzymes that protect against oxidative damage. So it's doubly important. Some of the best food sources of it would be eggs, dairy products like yogurt and cheese, meats, almonds, mushrooms, and leafy green vegetables. If you want to supplement, you can get better results if you take the active form R5P, since it will skip one conversion step on its path towards making FAD. Just keep in mind that activated B vitamins can lead to more side effects in sensitive people, so see which form you best tolerate. Next, let's talk about NADPH and the nutrients needed to make it. Like I mentioned before, it is what powers the glutathione reductase enzyme. Your body makes it mainly through a pathway called the pentose phosphate pathway, which starts from glucose, so sugar. Instead of breaking glucose down all the way into energy, this pathway uses a modified form of glucose to make NADPH. For this, you need a handful of key nutrients and cofactors. Without them, the production will drop and your glutathione recycling system will also slow down. These cofactors include vitamin B1, B3, magnesium, and of course you need glucose, since the whole pathway starts with it. That means all these nutrients together, so B2 for the glutathione reductase enzyme, 
and B1, B3, magnesium, and glucose for the NADPH production will be the backbone of your recycling system. But there are a few more nutrients that also affect glutathione functioning that should be named here. Let's go over them now. First, the amino acids that make glutathione in the first place. So cysteine, glycine, and glutamine. As long as you have enough of these building blocks, your body is constantly producing glutathione to clean itself up. Usually cysteine is the rate limiting amino acid here. So a good cysteine supplement would be things like N-acetylcysteine or whey protein. Next, selenium. Selenium isn't directly needed to recycle glutathione, but it's vital for glutathione peroxidase, the enzyme that uses glutathione to neutralize specific harmful compounds in the first place. If you don't have enough selenium, glutathione can't do its job as effectively, and you end up with more oxidized versions of it that need to be recycled. Best sources here would be Brazil nuts, and if you want to supplement, go with selenomethionine or selenium yeast. Next, vitamin C. Being an antioxidant itself, it also helps reduce the load on glutathione by tackling free radicals. That means if you have more vitamin C, your glutathione reserves won't get used up as quickly. I personally prefer whole food vitamin C instead of ascorbic acid supplements, but that's a topic for a different video. Fourth is zinc, which is a component for lots of antioxidant enzymes, and it helps regulate the production of methylthionine, which binds heavy metals and reduces oxidative stress that way. Like vitamin C, this means less demand on glutathione, which means your recycling system doesn't need to work as hard. And lastly, alpha-lipoic acid. This is an incredibly potent sulfur-containing antioxidant that needs to be handled with a lot of care. Even though it will help support glutathione, too much can lead to detox reactions, especially from heavy metals, because it will activate their elimination from your cells. I talk about this in a different video in more detail, and you want to be very careful with it. So before taking it, do all the things that I talk about in the other video, and then start slow and see how your body reacts. Great, so that's how to support your glutathione recycling system intelligently. You don't need to take all the cofactors that we talked about in this video, but be aware of how they affect your recycling system and what bottlenecks might come up. Also, if you want to increase glutathione to improve your body's detoxification systems and get rid of things like microplastics, heavy metals, excess estrogen, or forever chemicals, make sure to check the description where I link my detox masterclass. It shows you how to get rid of all these toxins step by step and goes over diet, supplement dosages, and elimination pathways. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.